Let's start the show. Welcome to another episode of the Tutson Interruption. My name is Trey Tutson. We are eating noodles, drinking a starry. This shit here, this soda right here is garbage. It tastes like Sprite and 7-Up cum. This is a not a good soda at all. It ain't got no look. Nigga, you don't taste the lemon, the lime, the starry. They need to change the name of this soda to sorry. Because this ain't good at all. Damn, this ain't good. I like these little cans, though. See, this little can right here. This little can is, is good because it's just it's just enough soda for you to keep drinking what you don't like. This is just enough of a beverage where you don't waste your money. Everything should be seven and a half ounces. Because that's just enough where you be like, oh, this is horrible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is not good at all. This is. Oh, yeah, this is fucking terrible. Yeah. It's just enough. Them damn sodas is bad. It's a lot of trash sodas out there, boy. It's a lot of trash. It's some trash. Let me see. Let me think of some trash sodas. I think Sunkiss is trash. Sunkiss. But you know what? Let me let me take that back. It's not really. Every soda's good. Ice cold. If you're drinking a soda pop, excuse me, Ma, and it's ice cold, excuse me, Ma, again, it be too cold for you to even really be able to review it. You're like, oh, this is refreshed. Bro, I got a smoothie yesterday. I like Smoothie King. Smoothie King is one of my favorite spots because I'm a little dude that want to remain little, and they got stuff like meal replacements. At the Smoothie King. You can go to the Smoothie King, get a meal replacement, put all the little stuff up in there, drink that, and you ain't got to put a burger in your body or some of this other garbage. Like right now, I'm eating, I'm eating Top Ramen right now. I'm not even eating Top Ramen. I'm eating, this shit is mid ramen. It's what I'm eating right now. Mm. Mm. Oh, damn. That ramen hit, boy. That shit take you back to having finals do. So, I like Smoothie King because Smoothie King a cool little, like I say, I'm a skinny dude. I like to get the smoothie all, the meal replacements. That's what I like. Well, they had this one smoothie that I really was digging. It was a green. This is what I would get. I get this order every, I got this order for years. Pull up. Yo, let me get the green tea tango. With banana, kale, and almonds. They be like, okay, that's all you want? Yes. Pull up. It's like $9. Bro, I pull up one day. Hey, let me get the green tea tango. We don't make that anymore. What? What it do? Like, y'all canceled it? Like, did it touch somebody inappropriately? Did it? Did it did it say a racial slur? Like why y'all got rid of the green tea tango? Sir, we just don't make that anymore. You gonna uh, pick something else. So now I got to freelance make an order. Man, I don't know if anybody's ever experienced this. You ever have to come up with a new thing you gonna eat? Or a new thing you go you have to come up <laughs> with a new item? You like, oh shit, they ain't got what I want. I'm just looking up at the th- I'm just looking up at the menu. I'm like, I'm gonna have to come inside. Bro, I ordered. So I said, man, the hell with it. I'm gonna go and get me one of them 
one of them metabolism boosts. I'm going to give me one of them metabolism smoothies. Just uh, whatever. I'm going to just try this metabolism smoothie. Man, I go get the, I get the smoothie, bro. And I was like, well, maybe if I get this and I add all the other stuff that I like to the smoothie, that'll make it pop better. So I was like, yeah, let me get the metabolism, whatever, the super shits, whatever it's called. Let me get the super shits with banana, kale, and almonds. Man, I ordered this damn smoothie. This was the worst tasting smoothie I ever had. I don't want to ghost nobody out. I don't know what your life is or what you're doing at the moment. But, nigga, this is the first time I drank something that looked and tasted like puke. Not throw up, nigga. Puke. Straight up puke. Just like, what the? F oh, it was terrible, man. So now I got to try to figure out a damn Smoothie King order. Because I, don't, I don't really don't know what to get. I don't know what to get from Smoothie King now. But I got to tell you, this goddamn, this soda right here, this is not it. Don't. And they tricked me. They got the commercial with Kiki Palmer in it. Looking fine and unpregnant. Looking fine and unpregnant. All in the commercial. Getting it in. She dancing with a starry dude. Remember... You saw her, she was, the commercial, if I, find, if I find the commercial, if I'm able to download the commercial, everything, I'm going to put it on here. Kiki Palmer is dancing with a, with a transparent nigga, like it's, she dancing with, she dancing with a soda water, it's weird. Anyway, uh, we here, it's another episode of the Touch and Interruption, thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, on Wednesdays, I was supposed to be doing every Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m. live on Twitch. I don't think I'm going to be doing that. I don't know. I might. Like, follow me and all that stuff on Twitch. And let's see what happens. It might pop off. I might just do it every once in a while. Hop on there. Hey, what's up, blah, blah. Have a live sort of interactive thing that we could do. But I like this. I like this right here. I like setting it up with my, with my leopard. I like having my... What hand is daddy? Like ha like have it how the f I like ha no, that's pointing to me. How do I get it? How do I get it back? How do I do no. You see my leopard back there. I got my leopard back there. My leopard is right here. He represents Independency. He represents humility. <laughs> My leopard is back there. But I like this for me. I like doing it like this because I like to talk and chop it up. I like to do this. Give me time to think. It give me time to flow. I feel comfortable like this. I would like it if there were, if I did it live and it was a live chat that was going. I think we'll do that. But I think I'm gonna do a different version of it for that. I don't think I'm gonna have a whole prep thing and this that and the fourth blah, blah, blah. Also. Uh, every fourth Friday at Radio Pub at the Riot Comedy Club, I do the Touch and Interruption Live. Is when comics come up, and we kind of do two man throughout the entire show. I do it with different various comics that come up to the stage. Also, every second Sunday. So this Sunday coming up, which is uh March, uh, what the hell would that be? March twelfth at eight p.m. at the Riot Comedy Club. I'm doing Q and A with Trey. That's when I'm on stage, I'm telling bits, and the crowd gets to ask me questions as I go on along through the set. This is actually the last one we're going to do with, with like, a lineup. After this one, ain't no more lineup. After this one, it's just going to be me on stage for 90 minutes doing as much material as I want to do, doing as much stand-up as I want to do, and people asking me questions throughout it. Um, it's just a challenge for me. To get better and stronger. And uh yeah, I just don't I don't I don't really wanna I I don't wanna make a lineup and I don't wanna do all that no more. I just wanna focus on getting better at this craft. And the more I'm on stage and the more I'm able to utilize that stage, I think I wanna do that. So speaking of comics being on stage, you know everybody's talking about Chris Brock special, this, that, and the fourth. Listen, bro. 
if you are a comic and your LPJs is low, that's last per joke. Or yo, SPYs is low. That shows per year. Tommy, what the fuck? You do this every time I record. You make some weird ass. Hey, look at me, nigga. I'm talking to you. Tommy, why the fuck is you barking outside, dog? Stop barking. First of all, nigga. Tommy. Hey. No. Come here. Hey. Come here. Now I got to pause this shit. Come here. What is wrong with you? Come here, boy. Sit down. Hey, sit. Sit for me. Sit. Sit for me. First of all, ain't nobody coming in here. Okay? It's you and I. You can calm down. You can relax. It's okay, baby. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Nobody's coming in here. First of all, you can't. Hey, nigga, listen. You can't be barking like that. They don't know you in here like that. Okay? We are sm I'm smuggling you up in here, okay? You are hidden precious cargo. All right? You are a Mexican on his way to America, stuffed in between two mattresses. <laughs> Stop barking. Damn, this is the most you've ever barked. Hey, hey, go to Cage. 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 I will be quiet then. Don't do no more barking. Damn, that's the most. He, he ain't never barked that much. My dog don't make no noise. That's why I still got him. Them little small dogs that be, that's the only reason I can't get me a small dog. They don't shut the fuck up ever. Sorry about that. I had to regulate the dog there. Dad. You good, Papa? You want a snack or something like that? Let me get you a snack. I'm supposed to be sharing these noodles with you. Me and my dog eat noodles, lady in the tramp style. Anyway, everybody was talking about Chris Rock special, this, that, and the fourth. Man, I, uh, I, I liked it. It was good. It was Chris Rock doing Chris Rock. I know a lot of motherfuckers that got an opinion about the special that didn't even watch it all the way through. Homie, you're not qualified if you didn't even watch it all the way through. Also, a lot of y'all got opinions about this special. And... Y'all, the truth is, it's a lot of y'all out here that are so wor worried and focused on the intangibles of comedy because y'all are overcompensating for the fact that y'all are untalented and highly unfunny. I'm seeing wild shit, man. Look, oh, I know that you get to that level, you be that huge, and... I guess that just what come with the territory of shit. When you're doing a live comedy special that is streamed out to 190 countries, you're probably going to get a bunch of people that don't agree with it. That's just what come with it. You're doing something that big or that magnitude, it's going to be some people that's going to have something negative to say about it. It's going to be people that be like, nah, for people to be like, it just wasn't good. Oh, it just wasn't good. It has nothing to do with that. It just wasn't good. Motherfuckers that said it wasn't good, y'all didn't even watch all of it. So how the hell are you going to say if it's good or not? Get your raggedy ass up out of here, player. Mm. Mm. This is the noodle episode. Anyway, I enjoyed the special. Um, I will say I wish I hadn't saw it live. I wish it. I wish there was a edited. I wish there's like an edited version of it, like the way Louis C.K. did. Louis did his show at Madison Square Garden. He did the show. It was the live show, but he has a special coming out in April that he did at the Dolby Theater. That's of the same material, but it's edited down and it just looks like a regular comedy special. Um, but yeah, wanted to see that. Uh, I don't even have nothing I'm really interested in talking about. I know I'm not doing, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. A lot of people talking. I'm, I'm going to do my, I'm going to do mine the way I'm going to do it. Cause I, I just like doing this. I just like getting on here, talking shit, being to myself, being with myself. And I like trying to figure this shit out. I like trying to figure out 
what the clip's gonna be, what I'm gonna turn it into. I'm interested in that. I found the things that I like to do. I probably record these, do the clips, post the clips. I could do that shit for forever. Cause it don't take nothing off of me. I don't feel like I'm I'm having to fucking give a piece of myself away. I ain't putting no wig on. I'm not out here trying to do no damn characters. I really don't like posting no damn stand-up clips. I talked about that last time. So I like doing these, I like doing these, but bruh. I don't think I'm doing no more. Like, I don't think I can listen to any more podcasts where it's more than two motherfuckers. If it's three or more people on the podcast, I don't want to hear it. Niggas is yelling over each other, laughing over each other. It's, it's chaotic sometimes. I don't think I want to sit through any of that and I and doing them is to the point where I'm like I don't know I don't know about doing them because a lot of times you be on the podcast and now I'm at a point where I'm just trying to slow down I come in where I come in at and that's that like I don't I'm not trying to you do an impression somebody's doing a, a louder worser impression of your impression not a louder worse version of they own impression of the person you brought up. No, they doing a worse version of your impression. Sometimes you avoid saying certain people's names because you don't want to hear them do a bad impression. You're like, I'm not even say this name. I'm not even going to say it. And then they fuck around and guess. And you be like, oh, shit, here come this impression. Damn, I couldn't avoid it. So I don't, I don't think I could do... I ain't think I'm gonna do anything like that, bro. I'm not doing no more or any of that shit. Everybody on John Morant case, they in his ass. John Morant fucked up. John Morant, I don't think John Morant know the NBA is the feds. The NBA is the FBI. See, you gotta understand something, bro. The NBA is a corporation. They got to find out who the fuck you really are. You find out who you really working with. Like, oh, shit, this is. They in Ja Morant. Hey, I'm glad he only got two games. I hope he don't get. I hope nothing else come out. But he don't, he don't understand. He on a radar. If I'm Ja Morant, I'm getting rid of all guns. See, what you got to do, Ja, is get rid of your guns and surround yourself with Muslim brothers. The Muslim brothers, you good. You protected. Get you a couple of them bow tie brothers, and you're going to be straight. But you are in a position where you got to get rid of all artillery. You can't have no more guns. You can't have no more weapons on you. No more nothing. You don't need to get caught with a slingshot, fam. If you got three rocks and a slingshot, they're going to suspend your ass for 25 games. You can't have that happen, Ja. And I'm rooting for him because I'm as an NBA fan, I don't really know who else to root for. All the people that I root for, the main one, he died, Kobe. Kobe retired. He dead. That was, I don't know how many, five years ago, six years or whatever it was when he retired. Everybody I root for fading off. We ain't got that many more years of LeBron, not that many more years of Durant, Steph, Dame, Harden. These my guys. I don't want to root for Giannis' big ass, but he dominant. I like Trey Young. I like him. He a baller. Little pretty boy. I like his attitude. I like his grit. I like small. I like little guards. I'm a little ass dude. I'm tiny. So, of course, I'm a like small player. Of course, I'm rooting for the small niggas. But everybody on the way out. So, my, the person I pick, I'm like, I'm going to root for John Moran. I like, let's go. Let's get it. Now, this nigga here hidden. This nigga that turned into the great Gatsby. Mmm. <laughs> Noodles is so good. Let me get a sip of this sorry. Sip of the sorry. I don't know who to root for, man. 
We out here though. I'm tired of having to hide shit. I'm tired of having to hide shit. Can't be open about nothing really as much as I could be. Motherfuckers is nosy. You know, nobody in my family know where I live at. Two motherfuckers. My daddy, no. My brother and my little sister. My dad gonna find out soon. I'm gonna tell my dad where I stay. But everybody else, you ain't gonna know where the fuck I stay. Unless you follow me home or some shit like that. And if you do, I'm gonna get a restraining order on your ass. I don't give a damn. I'm getting a restraining order out on you. Nobody know where I stay because I'm trying to keep shit private. I can't really deal with the messiness. I think I've talked about this before. I don't really like the messiness. I can't stand somebody that ain't got enough going on within themselves to handle their own business, to just be in their own shit. And you got to know that. If you got people around you, they don't never really ask truly how you doing, let you talk, let you get shit out. They always trying to get information out of you. Just know anytime they trying to get that information out of you, it's to go spread that shit to somewhere else. That's why it's tough for me to go to therapy. Because, bitch, you telling somebody my business. You telling somebody the stories that I got that I'm telling in therapy, you be a damn fool to keep them to yourself. Just on some cool point shit. Just on being a cool person, you're going to be like, man, I got to tell you about this one client. Boy, this boy here. I told my dad a story about being in an orgy. I told him that this story this weekend. That blew his mind. This happened to me. Marina Del Rey. See, you don't tell everybody every... I don't tell everybody everything like a lot of my friends. I don't tell them all. I keep a lot of shit to myself. I'm an open book. If you ask me something, I will gladly tell you whatever it is. But I ain't just free with information anymore. Because I, I just... I don't like. I just don't like talking to motherfuckers no more. I really. I just don't. I don't like talking to y'all. So a lot of y'all that I run into on a regular basis, y'all some goofy, whack booty ass niggas, and I just want y'all to just keep your space. I just, just, hey, what's up, nigga? Keep it moving. I don't really want to talk to y'all no more. I don't. Y'all all complain about the same shit. Y'all talk about the same shit. And none of you motherfuckers is near about making any of the sacrifices that I've made to even just to be available for the game and the craft. So I don't really want motherfucking talk to you, brother. I just feel like we ain't got shit in common. So I don't tell this story, but I told my dad this story. My dad was telling me some stories this weekend. I don't know if you ever had that. For those of y'all that like. Maybe you didn't talk, like, you have a relationship with your dad, but it, it's just, y'all, you're just getting to the point, like, you're getting to the age now where it ain't stiff. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, it ain't no tension or whatever there. It, it, it a little loose, and you're able to actually kind of really talk. I know some cousins, they ain't gonna never have that relationship with their fathers. And they swear by their daddy, but I'm telling them, I'm like, boy, you missing out. Until your daddy talks to you like you an actual man, you, that relationship is strained. You ain't going to the next level. If you get around, if you can't be yourself around your parents, I feel like you doomed in this world. If I got to alter myself, a lot of people want to say this is a sign of respect, do all this different shit. It could be, but I see it as this. My parents raised me to be myself. They did. They did a lot of everything that they could so that I could be whatever it was that I wanted to be. That's what it was. My dad told me that. I wanted you to just be able to be whoever it was that you wanted to be. You not doing nothing that you have to do. So I ride on that, and I like that. I, I subscribe to that shit completely because whenever I'm in a real fucked up situation and I need to just go talk, I could just sit in that backyard, smoke a cigar, and just tell my dad, like, hey, this is some of the heaviness that I've been dealing with. And we're going to laugh, and he's going to look at me and be like, man, I love you. You're going to make it through all of this. You're going to be all right. Don't worry. Your daddy was once there. you like, what? 
He was telling me some stories. Man, I love this story, but I had to tell him. I was like, Dad, I had a crazy story. Okay. I was about to tell a story, but I decided I wasn't going to tell a story. I'm going to go into something else. I'm like, eh, I don't want to get that detail out. That's all I'm saying about being an open book and just being like, no, I'm going to shut that shit down. I'm not going to be no open book about certain shit. You know, I was um, I was talking to somebody on the phone, and I was riding in traffic, and somebody, like, cut me off, or they did something crazy, right? And I got upset. Like, man, what the hell? Yada, yada. And the person was like, and I said something. They was like, you say you're going to beat them up? I'm like, no. Like, I don't do that in traffic. Why the hell would I ever fight anybody that I'm never going to see again? Why? I don't understand. That's the one thing about road rage I never understood. Why in the hell would you get in the fisticuffs or get into shooting somebody or some type of violent act with somebody that you ain't never going to see again? You are supposed to fight with the people that you're going to see often. Family violence is necessary because stuff happens where you're going to see your family again. So you need to go ahead and duke it out. Let's get it over with. Let's fight so we don't fight at the funeral. Let's fight so we don't fight at the wedding. Let's fight so we don't fuck up somebody's birthday party. That's the only people you're supposed to fight in this world is people that you can't change your relationship to them. Punch your uncle. Kick your auntie. Slap your grandma because you can't change it. You're going to have to meet up with them again. So you need to make sure that when y'all meet up, there's peace. You're like, hey, we already did. We already dealt with that. That's in our past. Now go ahead and pass the green beans. And let's act like family. I'm not fighting nobody, bro. I can't fight. I ain't. I can't. I, I can tell you, that I'm not a fighter, but I am still a protector. I'm not a fighter, but I am still a protector. I can make sure that I prevent us from ever getting in a situation where we got to fight. That's protection. I'm keeping us out of harm's way by making sure we in environments where we don't never go to it. To me, that should be rewarded more than a dude that's duking it out in the parking lot of a club or a dude that's snapping on somebody in Walmart. I'm just saying, I'm a protector, not a fighter. You're not finna catch me fighting. It ain't happening. It ain't happening, bro. The only way I fight is if my manhood is completely challenged. And I'm talking about the dude is naked and he like, it's going down, little man. Like, all right. I don't think I can talk my way out of this one. Come on. Let's fight. And if you do it, knock me the fuck out. So I just wake up sore. Because that shit is less traumatic <laughs> than me screaming the whole time. All right, well, that's uh, been the Touch of Interruption. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in. We're going to keep doing this, man. I'm going to put out more episodes. You're going to get another one this week. This has been good. It's been great. I appreciate y'all. Check me out on all the socials. Follow the podcast on Instagram. Subscribe to it on YouTube. Share and spread the word. Because I'm going to keep on kicking out this silly, funny, ridiculous, goofy, crazy. Silly. I'm out of adjectives. Shit. I'm going to keep on doing it. Thank y'all very much. And until next time. Boop.